So we're going to be looking at Poisson distribution, which is a distribution of rare events, things that are not happening on a regular um, occurrence, something like being struck by lightning. And we often talk about it involving rates, like time being involved in this. Oops. And another thing to keep in mind with Poisson is that it's discrete variables only, which if you hopefully remember, discrete are things like counting numbers. So for instance, number of birds seen or number of lightning strikes. So there are four requirements, much like binomial, that we have to memorize for Poisson to justify using the Poisson distribution. So the events have to be random, and that means that they're not predictable. They occur randomly. Events need to be random, which means they have no influence on each other. So if a volcano blows up once, we have to assume that it would be independent, that another volcano blowing up would not be related to that. Um, so no influence on each other. And events cannot occur at the same time. So, for instance, if I'm looking at the example of um, spotting a rare bird, it has to happen randomly, so it just has to happen random with no predictability. It needs to be independent, so if I see one rare bird, it doesn't mean I'm going to be more likely to see another rare bird. And the events cannot occur at the same time, so I'm not going to see the same rare bird twice at once. I can only see one bird at a time. So, the last one is that the rate of occurrence is constant. And our rate, this is usually like the, as an example, 6 per hour. The rate is how frequently we would expect to see it over a given amount of time. And the longer we look, the higher chance we have of seeing an event happen. And the shorter amount of time we look, the less of a chance we have of seeing an event occurring. So as time goes down, as time decreases, chance of seeing the event also decreases. And if we spend more time, as time increases, we'd expect to see our probability actually increasing as well. Now with the rate, we have to be careful that you match the rate to the time frame you're solving for. And so for instance, if I give you a rate of 2 per hour, that's kind of the same as saying 48 per day. And why is that? Well, how many hours are there in a day? There's 24 hours in a day, so 2 times 24 gets us to the 48. So going from hour to day. And the same idea with 2 hours per day is the same as 1 per 30, or 1 over 30 per minute. And how I get that is, well, how many minutes do I have in an hour? I have 60, so I have to divide that up. So 2 divided by 60 gives me 1 over 30, or 1, per th 1 divided by 30. So, we do have to watch out for that, and we'll see how that plays out in the problems we look at. But you've got to make sure you match your rate to the time frame that we're actually solving for. So you can either make it bigger or smaller, depending on whether you're looking at a bigger time or a smaller amount of time. Our formula, again, don't need to worry about it at the basic level, but it is there for you if you need it. We will be using it for the merit and excellence level problems. In your calculator, kind of like binomial, I've given you a shortcut and we can use a p bracket x comma lambda. And similarly, we have got the pd for exactly, or just one, only one selection. And the pcd, this is for a range of selections. So these variables that we need to know are going to be x, and this is the total number of successes. So for instance, how many birds I actually see. i.e. seen seven birds in one hour. And lambda, again, lambda, is the mean time, or the mean number of occurrences or successes over a period of time to the rate, and it is again time being the essence with Poisson. So these are things like seven 
Well, we won't use seven again. Maybe I could expect to see three birds per hour. That could be my lambda. So I would expect the chances of seeing seven in an hour are probably pretty slim if I normally see three per hour. So the mean number is what we'd expect to see. And that's exactly how we find out with our expected value for this formula as well. So remembering our expected value, this is kind of our mean, or our average, what we'd expect to see happen in a given period of time. And the mean is the same as the rate, so the mean is equal to lambda. And your standard deviation, this again being your variability. So sigma, funny symbol there, but just like a zero with a line over the top, is equal to the square root of lambda. Right, and like most of these problems, reading the question and deciphering the information is the hard part. So let's take a look. A speed camera catches 15 cars speeding an hour. What is the probability of the camera catching 14 speeders in an hour? So both of these are talking about per hour, and here, because this part's the question, this is what I'm looking for. What is the probability of a camera catching 14 speeders an hour? That's what I want to know, so that's going to be equal to my x. It again is what I'm looking for, or questioning. And the part that's been given to me here, a speed camera catches 15 cars speeding an hour. Maybe another way to fix this, I might fix it for your notes, is to say something like, on average, a speed camera catches 15 cars speeding per hour. Because again, that rate that we're looking for, that lambda, is usually what we mean by the mean number or the average number of occurrences. So in this case, lambda is equal to 15. And a really important thing for us to check here is that I'm talking about 15 cars per hour, and I'm looking for 14 cars again in an hour, so I've matched my time frame, like I was saying up above. We've got to make sure we match the rate to the time frame we're questioning. So here my rate has been given to me in an hour, and I'm asking about a question in an hour, so that's okay. And this is, in this case, a specific one. I'm looking at just 14. So if you wanted to think about diagramming that out, 13, 14, 15 possibilities here, 16, 17, it could go on, but I'm looking for just 14 cars. So this is going to be Poisson, and it's using the P PD for precise. My X is 14, and my lambda is 15. So if you go to your calculator, Again, it's going to be in stat, distributions. You don't see Poisson in the first menu. You have to arrow over for it. And then you see Poisson there. And we're looking at the PD there for precise, because I'm looking at only 14. It's not a more than or less than problem. So make sure it always says variable at the top. My x in this case is 14. And my lambda, my average, is 15. And if I execute, there I get 0 0.1024 as my probability. So if I catch, on average, 15 cars speeding in an hour, I would expect that catching 14 in one hour is going to be that probability there. So looking at the next question here, what is the probability of the camera catching more than 14 speeders in an hour? So we're still relating back to this first problem. So my lambda is still going to be 15, and it's going to be in hours, so I'm going to make sure I keep that there so I remember. Now, here, I'm talking about more than 14 speeders. So if we think about my possibilities, again, 13, 14, 15, 16, I'm just writing out possibilities of the number of speeders I could catch. If I want more than 14, does that include 14? You should be shaking your head, it doesn't. More than 14 means more than 14, so it does not include it. So I need 15, 16, 17, etc. Just like binomial, you put your dot to the left, always. And we can put this into our calculator. So, going to Poisson. Oh, let's write down what we're going to do here first. This is Poisson. This is CD, because I'm looking for a range. My dot is on 14. My lambda is 15. So here, go back. I want to make sure this says PD right now. I want to go back all the way to 
to make sure that I get to Poisson and do CD. Again, I need 14 and 15, like it says there. So that probability is 0 0.4656. But like binomial, your calculator will only calculate the stuff below the line. So that's what the calculator has calculated, everything 14 and below. So for my answer, we need to make sure that we go one step further and do 1 minus 0 0.4656. one minus zero point four six five six and we get zero point five three four four so that's going to be the probability that we get more than fourteen speeders in an hour so watching out for that again dot is always left of the line And then if you're looking for the stuff above the dot, if you're looking for the more part, you need to make sure you do a 1 minus your answer in your calculator. If it's a more than, otherwise you remember that your calculator always calculates the stuff below the line. Okay, a couple more examples here. What is the probability of the camera catching less than 15 speeders in half an hour? So here's a catch for us less than f sorry less than 5 speeders in half an hour so i'm no longer talking about hours here i'm going to have to adapt it so i know that i've got normally 15 in an hour so in half an hour what would you expect well in half an hour it should be 15 divided by 2 which gives us 7.5 so the lambda i'm going to use in this problem for half an hour is going to be 7.5. So less than 5 people, write out my outcomes, we could have 6, 5, 4, 3, etc. And less than 5, does that include 5? It does not. So less than 5 is everything below 5. Dot always goes to the left of that line, so my dot's on 4. So this is going to be Poisson. It's C because it's a range of values, 4, 3, 2, or 1 people. So bracket 4, comma. On average, previously we'd done 15, but now we're looking at a time period of only a half. So I'm going to use the 7.5 for half the hour instead of the whole hour. Put it into brackets. CD again, because it's more than one option there, a range of values. And now I'm going to have the 4, enter, and 7.5 for half the hour. And here we get 0 0.1321 rounding. And I do not need to do 1 minus in this case, because my calculator is looking for everything below the line, and that is also what I'm looking for. Right. So what is the probability of the camera catching 8 speeders in 10 minutes? So now we're looking at 8 speeders in 10 minutes. So I still need to adapt my lambda. If it's normally 15 in an hour, well how many 10 minute periods are there in, a, in an hour? So in 10 minutes, let's break that up. 1 hour, so 15. I've got 60 minutes in an hour, so there's 6 10-minute time frames in the hour. So 15 divided by 6 should give us 2.5 per 10 minutes. And that's going to be the new lambda for the 10-minute period. And I usually just put in brackets or right next to it kind of what the per time period is because it's easy to lose track of what that number was for. And in this case, the 2.5 is for the 10 minutes. And again, that's because <coughs> if I know that there's 15 in an hour, how many times does 10 minutes happen in an hour? Well, it happens 10 times, or sorry, 6 times for the 60 minutes. So 15 divided by the 6 times gives us 2.5. And what's the probability of catching 8 speeders? Well, that's just exactly 8 speeders. You can put out other ones if you want, but it's exactly 8 speeders. So this is going to be a Poisson and a precise one. 
Here, the one number I'm looking for, my x value is going to be 8, and my lambda is going to be 2.5. So I notice that I'm in CD. I'm still in CD, so I need to exit backwards until I can get to Poisson and get that to PD for the precise, for just the one option at 8 hours, or sorry, 8 speeders. I'm going to put in an 8, and my new lambda for 10 minutes is 2.5. And I get a really, really small number here, so this is going to be equal to, again, when you see that E, that standard form, so this tells me I need to move my decimal three spots over. So if I have 3, 1, 0, 6, my decimal was here, I need to go over 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 spots. And fill in the gaps with zeros. So that's my probability there, 0 0.003106. And here we get into the expected value. What is the expected number of speeders the camera will catch in one hour? So if you remember, our expected value is actually just lambda, is actually your average rate. So for one hour, well, we already knew that, lambda was equal to 15 in one hour. So that's also equal to your expected value or your mean. So your mean is equal, or your expected value is equal to 15. What is the expected number of speeders the camera will catch in 15 minutes? Well, if it was 15 in one hour, how many times does 15 minutes happen in an, in an hour? And that's going to be four times, that's a quarter of an hour. So 15 divided by four gets me 3.75, and that's for the 15 minutes, or a quarter of an hour. So my expected value there would be 3.75. And the expected number of speeders the camera will catch in 10 minutes, well we just calculated that. There's six sections of 10 minutes and an hour, so 15 divided by 6 got us 2.5 per 10 minutes. So in this case, my expected value would be 2.5. And those are all speeders as units. So in 10 minutes, I'd expect to find 2.5 speeders. In 15 minutes, 3.75 speeders. And in an hour, I'd expect to see that I catch 15 speeders in that hour. So that's the tricks with Poisson. Make sure that you're being, again, very careful to watch for matching your time frame to the rate that you've been given. So making sure you can do conversions between days and hours or weeks and years and things like that. Um, but you'll get a lot of experience with that as we start to do our practice problems. So also one more reminder, your PC is definitely when you're looking for something like a more than or less than, more than one option. And the PP for the precise option is for when you're looking at exactly one possibility.